Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here. Today's going to be a great show. Got all kind of cool stuff on it, but let's get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Tactical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. Run and check out all the stuff they do up there. Good stuff. High today, listen, I wrote down 96. That's what National Work Weather Service says. 96, <laughs> low 79. Water temperature, 86 degrees. I, uh, Billy Grantham and some of the folks up there in Jackson County promised us some cool weather Friday, but I don't know. I, I, I believe it when I see it, Billy. All right, the, uh, our river reading brought to us by Mountain Dew. Take it outside with Mountain Dew. Looking at the Apalachicola Blunstown, 1.6. I repeat, 1.6. It has not been that low in a very long time. The Choctahatchee at Carville, 0.6. Together, that's the lowest readings I can remember doing on my show. Uh, it's, it's amazing uh, that that's really low. 0.6 at the Choctahatchee River at Ebro, and then 1.6 at the Big River. And I've got some pictures to show you people catching fish. And you stop to think about it, they get up in the holes now when it starts getting low. They get up in the holes, and fly fishing has been strong, not just on big rivers, but the creeks. Uh, uh, there have been some good fish brought out of the creeks, okay? Uh, pine log, especially. Let's look at the tide chart. Uh, we've got neap tides today. It's brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We've got a low tide of 740, high 1157. Still neap tides for a couple of days, but the weekend, we're getting back into some good, strong tides. Marine forecast, still sort of hanging in there, coming from the north, northwest at about nine. That's sort of been an odd pattern this time of year to get it at a north, northwest uh, in, in September like this. But anyway, that's what it is. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, let's get started, folks. Got some pictures and all. I want to say good morning to Levi Phillips, the, the Phillips brothers, back in most of the days. Uh, Charlie was our linebacker, and we had Moon, who's been on the show, and Levi, who was three, Philip, uh, and their kids came through. So, good morning, Levi. Glad you're watching, buddy. All right, look, I got some great pictures this morning. Let's start off with old Seth Summers. Seth's one of my former students, sent this into Panama City Fishing, a top water. Now, check this out. I'm going to zoom in on the plug. What color is that? What color? I said my favorite color. Okay, that beige color. Got a little bit of color on it. Uh, Top water, Seth Summers. Good job, Seth. All right, now, I, I got all kind of treehouse stuff. People send me some more stuff. And, but this is not a bad idea. When your kids outgrow their, their uh, little uh, house you built them, take that to the woods and, and you know, just transport it up there. That, yeah, maybe, you know, they'll outgrow these things, so stop and think about that. I, I've got a lot of comments on that do-it-yourself do uh, site. Every now and then, a flashback to Lake Seminole, Jack Wingate. He was legendary. It's just a time that we'll never uh, have again with a person like Jack Wingate. It says, they'll eat it up tomorrow, okay, because his favorite saying, cuz, they bit yesterday. And that's Jack right there. And they've redone that now. Okay, listen, we were rolling away this past weekend over toward Gulf Breeze. This is in Destin, and Gail shot this picture out the window. I told her, honey, grab it, shoot this. But uh, it's, this is fascinating. This is like on a Friday afternoon. And look at the boats. We're looking north in the Choctahatchee Bay. And that's what they call Crab Island. And I, I'm just fascinated that this has turned into like a big playground. It's fa I got three pictures of it. And here they've got, <laughs> they've got I, I, I think this is good. I, I wish we could fish in that area. And I, but what I was going to show you, look on the left-hand corner. See this dark water? You could, I, I, we zoomed in because I said, find us a fishing area. What would be cool because some of the people spending out there, you need to go up there with the floundering rig with the flounder lights and spotlights and just shine all through there and go flounder gigging at night because uh, I guarantee you there's some flounder come through that little channel. So anyway, that's Crab Island. Maybe you understand this. Kids, grandpa and grandma are here. This is the evolution of our music on the right hand side, the old vinyl, and then all the way to the left, the three generations of, uh, <laughs> of I thought that's really, and by the way, PBS is having a uh, great documentary with Ken Burns on country music this week, if you get a chance to watch it, really enjoyable. My buddy Marcus Lee Parrish, 
the last day of scallop season, this is probably the last picture of scallops I'll show you, he took his mom. He took his mom and they went in a kayak. Good job, Marcus, and got her bag full. Phenomenal year. My cousin, Jerry Baker, I <laughs> said the Blue Jays, that it's so dry they can't find any water. So he had this, look at there, this Blue Jay is drinking, anybody didn't find water. But look how vertical, that's a Blue Jay vertically drinking that. That's interesting, and if you got a kind of water around the house, uh, they're thirsty, I, I, I added some. With the rise of self-driving vehicles, it's only a matter of time until there's a country song where the guy's truck leaves him. <laughs> and you know we're gonna have all self-driving vehicles before long. All right, you remember when we had, on, on the show, we had uh, Cassie Flowers on the show, uh, I'm sorry, Carrie Flowers on the show, and we're talking about her outdoor activities. She was in a wheelchair, remember? She had an accident. And she sent me a message, and this is a venture team challenge in Colorado. And here she is with a group of people. There she is in a wheelchair. Isn't that, is that cool? I'm so proud of her keeping things going. Look at there. That's her team right there helping her out. There she is right there. Good job, Carrie Flowers. Very proud of you. They are, it's a, a group thing where you go through trails and then get on the river and all kinds of things like that. Okay, that's uh, just a picture of a... You can't see that in my yard yesterday, a turtle was eating one of the dates that fall off the tree. So uh, let me see if I can get on out of here. Bodie Lachino, okay, Bodie, good job there. I'm gonna get Bodie on the show this week. Let's see. Hey, I'm gonna show you something that has nothing to do with outdoors other than they, they were my outdoor class. This is a love story. These two kids are in my class several years back and their mom posted this, okay? This is Jordan and Jonathan. And I told her mom, I said, I love this picture. And she said, her name Deborah Barnes, Adam, Winston Chester, they met in your class and romance was on. They met in an outdoor air class and look how they're, now they're happily together. All right, we had the tree stands. I got this email right, right after I showed yesterday on those tree stands. Good morning, coach, it's Vander Nowell. I was just watching your show and seeing the stands that you were posting. Here's one that me and my wife did together. It's, listen to this, it's a 2,500 gallon water tank and we convert it into a tree stand, and man, it's nice. Okay, here's a picture of the inside here, okay? And, and then uh, what's cool, here's the outside camouflage. A oh, water tank, isn't that a brilliant idea? I've already gotten all kinds of pictures from local folks here in the Panhandle with their tree blinds. I told, and the, the Nowell family, I told Van, I, know, I, said, I said, I know your granddad would be proud of you. His granddad was V.J. Nowell from Highland Park. V.J. built my house. He was my builder uh, of my home I still live in. He built it in 1979. And what a gentleman of a man. I got to, got to know him real well as my contractor. And that house now is going through Hurricane Opal in 95 with three feet of water flat, flying through it. It's going through Hurricane Michael with six trees crashing through it. And it's still standing. And uh, V.J. Nowell built a fine home. So anyway, his grandson, Vander. And his son Vance also know him well. Now let's take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Glad you're with us this morning. I want to say a good morning to Stephanie and Chad over there in South Walton. Some loyal viewers over there. Ran into them over the weekend in Gulf Breeze at a volleyball match. We're going to see y'all tonight over in South Walton. Uh, Moses is going over to play volleyball, and I'm looking forward to seeing y'all. And any of you folks over in South Walton, come watch a good volleyball match. That's two good quality teams. Those girls play really hard, enjoy it. Y'all, usually this time of year, I'm talking about high school football, which is still so important in Panhandle, but that, uh, volleyball is important too. So I, I try to take them all in. We've got a situation where these, these kids are you know, practice hard and play hard. So anyway, Hope to see y'all tonight. We got it on the way back from Gulf Breeze to stop by Navarre. I wanted, uh, you know, I go there a couple times a year just to check out that Navarre Pier. has always been special to me because I caught my very first pompano I ever caught was off the Navarre Pier, fishing with a homemade jig. Uh, this, this, this older guy showed me how to do it. I never will forget Mr. James Nelson for doing that. So anyway, I like to check on him because the thing about it, pier fishing, that is, to me, it's a barometer of the fishing that, that goes on in, in the panhandle. And you know, we just last week we talked to, to Carrie at our local pier and he gave us a rundown and I, I, I repeated everything he said and it's been a, been a pretty decent year in Panama City Beach Pier. And uh, so I like to check on the other end, see how they're doing. And uh, I, take a, I like to do a first hand. I like to call, you know, I call Carrie or either I take my camera to, to, and, and do a video and talk to them. And, and what I, I did a little interview with the folks over there, you know, that work there, 
And then I just walked out on the pier and just shot some video with some music to it and all, just so you get the feel of it. And what's cool about it, uh, there's surfers, you see some surfers there, because we have pretty steady wind, and you'll see a dolphin and catching fish, and it's pretty steady. It was already in the afternoon, really, and of course it was hot, but it had a good breeze and all. So this is sort of a report from the Navar Pier on what's going on over there and what kind of summer they've had and what they're expecting for the fall run. So, Jeff, let's go ahead and run this. All right, folks, so we're in the bar. We're going to run by and check out the Navarre Beach Pier. Right, check them out about once a year, see how they're doing here at the end of the summer. <laughs> Folks, we're inside here at Navarre Beach Pier, and uh, we're just going to get a take a a little shot of how. All right, we got two. We got two folks back here now. Tell y'all, tell us who you are. I'm Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy. Marshall. Jeremy. Madison. Madison and Jeremy. So y'all hang around here a lot, sort of. Yeah, every day. Every day. All right, Jeremy. Are you a fisherman? Yes, sir. I right, listen. We got a lot of a lot of fishermen to watch this show. And we're coming out of Panama City. Tell me about the pier this year. How this summer? What kind of summer have we all had? Uh, we've had a pretty slow summer because the water temperature got up real high. It's 85 and a half degrees as of yesterday. The water's pretty high. Salinity's been pretty high. It means a lot of fresh water in the water. Kings have been kind of slow. We've had a few caught today in the 15 to 25 pound range. Good. And that's really been about it. We had a good Kobe a year earlier this, this spring. Good Kobe year. Okay, let's go back to the springtime. Did your pompano run pretty good in the springtime? I don't do a whole lot of pompano fishing. Okay. So, I mean, I've, I've seen a few caught out here. We well, appreciate your honesty. Uh, now, uh, we're getting into the fall. We're getting ready for fall pattern. What kind? What are y'all expecting for the fall? The fall, we get a we get a good, uh, our big kings run, our 40, 45, 50 pounders sometimes, and we get a lot of sailfish that come in. And that, then it goes into wintertime fishing, which is Bonita. So y'all been catching some, y'all catch sailfish off the end? Yes, sir. That's great. And what, okay, why are the smiling young lady up here? And what's your favorite kind of fishing? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, our shark fishing is pretty interesting. That's probably my favorite thing to watch. Shark fishing? Yeah. How's the crowd been this, this summer? You have a pretty good crowd? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every day, busy, busy, busy. It's a cool place. It is. Cool place. All right. Okay, I'm going to walk out on pier just shoot a little bit of video. Right. And thank you very much. Of course. Have a good one. Okay. Great hospitality here in the bar.
Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that little video there. And I can say, we, one of my goals here is to help inform you as what's going on. They've had a pretty good year off in the bar pier, and, and they've fished it pretty steady, and the crowd has been something else. They said, good crowd all summer. People, and even if you don't want to fish, just walking on a pier, just relaxing, and you sort of get to get out there and see that. That's just a beautiful scenery. You're there. So just go walking on a pier if you get a chance, or down in East Point, walk on that old St. George Island Bridge. Our fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers, our good friends down there who really do a good thing. They just help out that whole community for so many years. Our time today, 2.53 to 4.53 this morning, and this afternoon, 3.14 to 5.14. It'll be a good time, and uh, we're going to get some cool weather soon, I promise you. Uh, it's just a matter of time because the sun is getting down just a little bit. If you notice the shadows and a little bit of different angles, you, you can sort of pick that up. I, I do want to remind you now, uh, I'll show the pictures again. Our, our fall sweepstakes where we're giving away a, a campsite for the weekend at Black Creek. This is really cool. Uh, this is Larry Brown. I'll just go through the same pictures I showed yesterday, but this is a campsite uh, that is just first class. Well done. Got a fish cleaning table back there, picnic area. I mean, even don't have a camper, might just want to go up there and spend the weekend there. And uh, I mean, but that, that got a, that, that's just cool. So anyway, send your name in. I've already got, already got some people entering already, and we'll draw in two weeks now. Next uh, Friday of next week, uh, we're going to do the drawing, okay? Also, I want to mention, I have, speaking of things like this, a lot of the viewers sort of send me stuff. I have some viewers that they want to get on a lease, and then I have some viewers that have a lease. They need one or two members. So stay in touch with me. I, I have some folks that, uh, that are uh, on both sides of that fence. So if you've got a... Got a situation, it's, it's still a good time to get on a lease. Uh, it's, it's just still, you know, early, mid-September, and and it's, it's fascinating. I, I'm, tomorrow, or one day this week, I'm going to talk about my Woods and Water subscription uh, I get every year. It covered the top 10 bucks that were taken last year, and a great story on each one of them. But one thing that stood out in my mind, we always talk about being the big bucks being taken in January, and I, I took looked at the top 20, and out of those top 20 bucks taken in Florida, and only like two, maybe three at the most, I think just two were taken in January during the rut. A lot of them were taken during bow season, like in November, and uh, even a couple of them taken in October. That's interesting. We'll talk more about that in detail, and I'll show you the pictures later on. Now, we're talking about doing some fun outdoor things, and it, I'm going to give you a list of different, uh, different things to show. Uh, Let's see, I think I've got enough, I've shown enough of the pictures right now. Uh, doing things in the outdoors, you know, around the Panhandle, a lot of fun, but, you know, at times we talk about it before, we're not sort of traveling and do stuff, and, I, and I, we sort of have this semi, if you're like me, you have this bucket list of places you want to go and things you want to do, and I have, a, I have mine, I, I write them down the other night, outdoor, I call them outdoor adventure trips. I don't know, it's not vacation, it's adventure trips. I like that word, that term better than vacation, but... There's different places and some little things. I wrote down 10, and I've done some and haven't done some. Uh, elk and moose hunt out west. I'm gonna have George Stewart come on because he just got back yesterday from his camping and hunting on public land out there. And that's, to me, that'd be a lot of fun thing to do. Uh, number two, this is no, no particular order. I wrote down Stuttgart, Arkansas. Since I was a young, since I was in my maybe 12, 14, really getting serious about hunting, I always wanted to go to Stuttgart, Arkansas. It was legendary because that's where that all kind. Of, that's where the you know ground zero of the duck uh, Mississippi Flyway, and uh, I've always wanted to go there and do a duck hunt. And I still may do that. Number three, a tarpon trip, Boca Grande. Check that one off. I've done that. You've seen the video. That's a lot of fun. Number number uh, four, Costa Rica. I always want to go fish Costa Rica. I haven't done it yet and hope to get to, get to do that one day. Number five, a tuna trip to Venice, Louisiana. Check that one off. I've done that one. Uh, number six, just go on, go on a red fishing trip in Louisiana while you still, while you still can catch that many, uh, while there's still that many out there. I've caught some red fish in Louisiana, but I haven't really just been on the trip where you just go out there with that guy out and just spend the day red fishing. I, you know, way back in, the, you know, I want to do that. Uh, Number seven, one word, Alaska. I've always wanted to go to Alaska. Alaska was just, I've had so many friends. All, all my friends are gone but me, it seems like. And, uh, but I, there's so much you can do in Alaska, and I, ho I hope to do that. Number eight, hike the Appalachian Trail. 
check that one off. Haven't done an entire trail, and I probably won't do much more hiking uh, in my lifetime. I've done a lot of it, and I've covered, you know, the Georgia section and Tennessee, North Carolina, and about to get into Virginia. I may go a couple more little trips if some of the family or kids want to go. Number nine, uh, I know you think this is silly, but fishing for red snapper in Panama City. <laughs> That's, that should be on everybody's top ten. If you stop and think about it, a lot of them have it on their top ten. Catching red snapper in Panama City is just, it's just special. And uh, let's see, number 10, fly fishing in Montana. I, I, I want to do that. I also had fly fishing up in Carolina and, and all that I, in Tennessee. I've done that. But fly fishing in Montana, where they filmed the movie A River Runs Through It around Missoula, Montana. I uh, just one of my all time favorite movies. And I just, I've always wanted to fish there. I've always wanted to sort of go along the Lewis and Clark Trail. And I just, I, I, I plan on doing that one summer. I was going to do a whole summer of that. But uh, life got in the way. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you have some outdoor adventures you want to take, I want to urge you to go and get some of them. Check off some of them one at a time. And uh, and also it's fluid. I have some on here I don't I, that I didn't put on here. I thought I wanted to do, and it's just not that exciting to me anymore. But a lot of these are I still want to do. So make out your outdoor adventure trip and and try to check it off. But uh, uh, and I and try to prioritize them. And I, I, I see myself uh, going to one of those places pretty soon uh, if we can get volleyball season over with. <laughs> okay, got to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. We've got a big show tomorrow, special guests coming in. And uh, you all have a great day today. Enjoy your work. Enjoy the folks you work with. Do something good for your fellow man. And have a great day. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.